go reactive. <laughs> what do I mean by that? Well, let's talk through a scenario. In this scenario, you're working with your team and each of your team members have a list of tasks that you keep the status of. You come in in the morning and you want to check on everyone's status. So you want to be able to pick a user and get user information. So how are we going to do that? Well, we want to be able to react to actions. So as you, as the user of this application, pick a different user from the list, that you can react to that. How do we do that? Well, we first start by declaring an action stream. Then we emit a notification when that action occurs and we react to that notification. How do we declare an action stream? We start by declaring a subject or behavior subject. In this example, I use a subject. We use private to encapsulate the subject in the service. So we're creating this code in a service and we're using private so that this variable can only be accessed from within that service. Next, we declare an observable, that's our second variable here, and that exposes the read-only part of that observable. So we use the as observable to get the observable read-only portion of that and use it in our declared variable here. That way, any other piece of code in our application can subscribe to that or react to that and get notifications from the subject. Okay, so our second step then was to emit a notification. So in our same service, we can emit a notification when the action occurs. So we do that by calling the subject or behavior subjects next method. So here, when we get a new user ID, we pass it in to next and next emits that into that subject. Then we can react to that notification in any of our code that wants to uh, react to that notification. So we can then perform an action. So in this case, we are going to uh, get the user information. Uh, we could also use it to get related data or to save. So here, if you look, each time that we select a different user, we're gonna pipe it through. We're going to switch map it on the user ID and then on that user ID that's being uh, emitted from that user selected action observable. And then we can use it in as a parameter in our HTTP get. So we don't have to have a procedural approach in order to have parameters on our uh, gets. Okay. If you like this video, please like and subscribe.